Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, December 19, 2019. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. We have to start with it's a duck market. What does that mean? If it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's generally going to be a duck at least, if not more than 80% of the time using the 80-20 rule. Let's cut right to the chase. We looked at this chart at least once or twice over the last few days, and you can see we've been discussing the fact that the market was in a bull flag pattern. What normally happens when it is a duck, it's going to break to the upside and you'll see higher prices come to the market. We're in the midst of seeing those higher prices now. So the SPY was up about $1.40 today. Maybe a touch less. I'm looking at an aftermarket quote. But here's the point. What we said was, how much higher above 3200 is the S&P actually going to get? What did we say? 10, 15, 20 points, maybe 30. I don't see much more on the outside of that. If it is, then I'll be wrong. That's not what my work tells me. It is what it is until it's proven wrong. Right now, we're in the midst of of within the scope of that number. There's obviously a whiff of seasonality that snuck its way into the tape. Not that the market's going higher, that's not really what I'm referring to. What I'm referring to is the fact that the market quiets down, which is really the recipe and one of the ingredients for higher prices. Quiet market, a lack of market participants out there, light volume, the path of least resistance is generally sideways, a la all week long in the bull flag pattern, and higher. So generally speaking, 80-20 rule, we're going to see sideways to higher prices when the volume is light, when it's quiet out there. We have that arrangement right now. What are we seeing? All week long, we saw sideways, and all of a sudden today, we see the beginning of a breakout. We also discussed that if the market began probing above, certainly closing hourly above the former highs that were made earlier this week, there would be some buyers that would step into the market. That did happen. That's how price is able to stay elevated above the former highs from earlier in the week. That wasn't rocket science. That's part of the duck conversation. If we switch over to an intraday 15-minute chart, for example, I want to bring up a different point. We're going to have to jump around a little bit. We'll throw the ball around the horn. But since the market is pretty much doing everything we said and was really expected to do under normal garden variety market conditions, there's not really a lot of layers of the onion that we need to peel back at present. It's a melt up. You let it go until she's done melting up. Is it finished tomorrow? Does it melt up through Christmas? Does it melt up through the new year? Those are all possibilities we don't know. We're going to sit back. We're going to let the market dictate what the analysis is. Right now, the analysis is bullish, uptrend, holidays. We have an awareness of the unexpected, but right now, the expected is more of the same. What's the floor right now? Well, the floor would be ES3200 for argument's sake. Getting back below the big fat round number would be a psychological barrier that under normal garden variety market conditions wouldn't be easy for the bears to do under these conditions. Here's the point that I wanted to bring up with the 15-minute chart. Yesterday, right at the end of the day, into the close, they sell the market off. Now, it's not a lot. We're not talking about big numbers. We're talking about pennies, but it's the point of the thing. It could be bigger numbers. It happens like this in scale. So it happens like this when there's a lot of volatility, and it also happens like this when there's not a lot of volatility like right now. So when there's a lack of volatility, the moves are much, much less magnified. They're measured in pennies as opposed to dollars in the SPY when there is larger volatility at stake. So here's the point. They sell them down into the end of the day. Again, we're talking pennies, but it's the concept of the thing. And then today, it's right back up. Was that shenanigans? Was it real sellers? We don't know. I err on the side of shenanigans, but here's the reason why I bring it up. Because it happens quite a bit, and it's okay, 
But at the end of the day, I get a lot of emails coming in right at the close, right after the close. Hey, was that it? Was that a sell-off? Is that the beginning of the sell-off? They're going down toward the morning, opening range low for Monday, yada, yada, yada. And the awareness is it can always be the start of something. But until and unless they get below and close hourly below the numbers that we were talking about earlier in the day and all week long from inside the numbers, then there's nothing doing. All it is is another simple test of an important price zone or price area. They run tests all the time. But here's the real underlying thing. I haven't said this in a while, so I thought I would dust it off, bring it back out. The market's job is to make everybody, as many traders and investors as possible, look like fools as much of the time as possible. As such, the market has a tendency to make it look like it's doing the opposite thing right before it actually begins to do the thing that it's going to do. Now, what are you supposed to do with that information? On its surface, nothing. But when you go a little bit deeper, I'll explain. So now you're getting inside my head, so you gotta put your galoshes on. The market is designed to be an emotional roller coaster. So we know that. So we have to take that into account. So as such, we have to have some contrarian thought processes in our mind at all times. Not that this is necessarily contrarian on its face, but at the end of the day, the last few minutes of the day, most of the time, I'm going to discount some abnormal behavior as compared to the rest of the day, unless it's a real outlier, unless it's a real reversal of sorts, unless something is really going on abnormal. But a little rundown for a few pennies, if you will, in comparison to the rest of the day, just a few pennies more. We're not going to make a federal case out of that. We're going to file it away in potential, possible, likely shenanigans. What's more evidence that we know that? Well, we go back to what happened the last several days. It's not always the case. You're not always going to find this. But here's a little rundown into the end of the day. Next day, right back up. We didn't go anywhere, but right back up. Little rundown into the end of the day. Next day, right back up. Didn't go anywhere. Little rundown into the end of the day. Next day, which is today, run up, right back up. It's like a storyboard. They're building a theme. Now, let's stay on this topic because we've got something else in the shenanigans department. We just got finished discussing a quiet market, light volume. Now, I'm sitting here all day long watching the market, minus a little bit of time here and there where I'm running around. I know nothing's going on. Stocks that are moving are moving at turtle speed. The S&P is moving at turtle speed. The volume is light. And all of a sudden, you'll notice on the daily chart, you look up at the top and you see the market breaking out to the upside. And you look down at the volume and say, hey, they're breaking out on volume. That would lead you to believe there's institutional participation. Now, even though 84, 85 million shares isn't a ton of volume in the SPY itself, but if you compare it to the recent volume, it's a pickup in volume. We take it at face value. It's a duck. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's generally a duck. So we say breakout on volume. That's good. That's healthy. That likely means higher prices coming for the S&P. Fair enough. That's pretty much technical analysis 101. It's not even technical analysis. It's just common sense analysis. But wait, there's more. Go back to a 15-minute chart and go back to the first candle of the day at 945. How many shares traded at 945? We'll be generous. It was less than 2 million. We'll call it 2 million for rounding purposes. Up volume was 820,000. Down volume was 973. It's less than 2 million. We'll call it 2 million. And we'll note where the top of the candle is. So the top of the candle is basically at the high or the highest of most of the candles of the day with minor exception. Okay, fair enough. I'll show you where I'm going with this. Go to the middle of the day and check out the volume in the middle of the day. Total volume in this 15-minute candle is less than 600,000 shares. You have a few of those. So there was not 80-some-odd million shares traded throughout the trading day. Do it this way. You have 26 15-minute candles in a trading day. You don't have to count them. I'm right. If there was an average of 2 million shares in each candle, you would still only be 
at just over 50 million shares. Where does the 80 some odd come from? Comes from the daily chart and it comes from thin air. We can double check the work doing it a different way. Here's a 240 minute chart, right? Here's the first 240 minute candle of the day. How many shares traded? About 17 million, a little short of 17 million. What's the next candle say? A little bit short of 18 million. So what does that give you? It doesn't give you 80 some odd million shares. So the next question comes in. Well, where does the volume come in from? How does it get there? Why does it show up on the chart? When you find out, let me know. Right now, it's filed under S for shenanigans. How about stocks on the move inside the numbers today? Anything going on there? DRI hit its price objective. Focus on the $110.60 number. That was entry price number one. We'll also take a peek at the chart of KSS. Came pretty close within pennies, but there's always a lesson to be learned one way or the other from every trade, whether it did happen or didn't happen. There's always a takeaway. What about the commentary today? What was going on in the commentary? Not a lot. You're welcome to see it. Here's the pre-market morning notes. Scroll up a little bit. You can start and stop it at your leisure. There wasn't a whole lot going on that was a mystery. It was pretty much a duck market like we said. So you can see the first couple of posts, even one before the opening bell. And then as the day gets started, if the market's going to get moving, I'm happy to be as active as possible. If the market is dead as a doorknob, there's really nothing to say. I don't want to belabor the point or sound like a broken record. So we basically just step aside, let the market do its thing, and we run some errands or do some stuff off the honeydew list. Here's a short-term five-minute chart of Darden Restaurants. The close yesterday was at 116.30. The stock is getting a buzz cut at the open, and our objective is to find that morning sweet spot trade. We want that quick morning trade. Slam bam, thank you, everybody. I know what some of you were thinking was coming, but it's not. Sometimes I get scolded by the ladies, so I have to scale it back a notch or two. But here's the deal. We're looking for an important number. We're looking for a quick and meaningful reaction from an important number. Why does that happen? We discussed it yesterday. It happens because these stocks or markets are headed for a destination. Once they reach the destination, if the destination was correct, one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to turn around and run back in the other direction, or they're going to hang around for a while, which is an indicator that there's actually another destination at hand, and they're just taking a break, consolidating, and there will likely be a continuation move. Sound familiar? Sound like a bear flag pattern, a bull flag pattern? Yes, it does. How do I know this? Because it is. All this stuff is taught in the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader. Let's get back to Inside the Numbers and DRI. How do you like that two-step plug right there? So the $110.60 number is posted on the board on the Inside the Numbers page long before the market opens for business. In today's case, I think it was there sub 7.30 a.m. The rest, as they say, is history. You see what happened? The low of day happened to be 110.35. The high after it hit the low or after it hit the 110.60 price was 112.96. How much profit each individual trader gets is up to the individual trader, him or herself, but the profit was there for the taking. And then the stock actually collapsed back down, heading for what? Another destination. Where's your bear flag pattern? Right here. This is the one we just discussed. Bear flag, bear wedge, bear whatever. And here it is. We do this all the time. This is an intraday chart doing the same thing we look at on daily charts, weekly charts, any chart, hourly charts. All charts act and react the same way so therefore everything that's taught in the course lazy e-mini trader can be applied for day traders for scalp traders for swing traders for long-term investors it doesn't matter it's a philosophy and it's an understanding of how the market works and how to look at the charts and how to identify the opportunity and also do what how to know when you're wrong 
and know when you're wrong small and fast. The secondary entry on DRI was 10921. There it is, nobody's doing anything into the last couple of minutes of the day, so therefore, the second price really didn't come into effect or play today. Here's the stock or chart of KSS Coles Corp. Now this one was a little bit of a bugaboo. The number you saw on the board, the entry was $49.89. The low of day is $49.93. Got a little bit of front run there or front ran, whichever one it is, got jumped in front of and look what happened. The high after hitting that number or missing that number I should say was $50.80. On a slow day like this, you can see, and here's the lesson learned, here's the takeaway. You can see the numbers still really are the numbers. Missing by a few pennies is a rounding error in the big scheme of things. When you're looking at the chart, the stock did what it was supposed to do. It went to the destination. It just didn't hit the specific number to the penny, but it went to the destination and it did what? turned around and went in the other direction. The takeaway is, I know my numbers. Just for effect, here's a 10 minute chart and you can see a little more magnified how close it really came. The low was 49.93, I was sitting at 49.89. Some of you were sitting at 49.93, ha ha ha. Anything going on over in Camp IWM? No, the melt up continues, the band is playing on. I think the other day we talked about a possible target for the IWM, about 166 and a half. Maybe it goes a little bit higher, maybe it doesn't get there at all. But if the other markets are going up, it's likely the IWM is going up as well. We don't have any relative strength, we don't have any relative weakness. We just have a market that's on par with everything else. We take it for what it's worth. We take it at face value. It's another duck. Here's a 60 minute chart of the VIX. Threw a little short hop out there, but we do want to move the ball around the horn. Looking at an hourly chart of the VIX and you understand and just saw where the SPY is. So we know the S&P is at highs. Why isn't the VIX at some new lows? Doesn't have to be at all time lows. But why do we have higher lows in the VIX on the hourly chart and we have the opposite effect in the S&P? Why is that? We don't need to answer that question. We don't really care. We need to know about it. It's a puzzle piece. It's on the table. Now, we also have to have an understanding that there is no volatility at present in the market. It may stay that way through New Year for the first few days into January. That's very possible. We don't know whether that will or will not be the case, but it's certainly possible for the next couple of weeks to remain very similar to days like today. Not every day, but in large part, don't be surprised if that happens. What's doing down at the transportation department? Well, it's pretty garden variety when you look at it. We have a trend line. Now the trend line was on, was off, is back on, and we have some moving averages. Yesterday, we came down to test the moving averages and test the top side of the said trend line. We're above the trend line and we're above the moving averages. That's bullish. We have some lower highs. That's not bullish. We have divergences. We have conflicting data on this chart. This chart is a little bit of a hot mess. So there's really no change from yesterday. We said most of that yesterday, so we have to let it clear up. By the way, since the daily chart really isn't crystal clear, we can certainly expand the search, if you will, to the weekly chart and see what we find, which is above all the moving averages, and we're basically going sideways back and forth after challenging these highs or this high or this zone for the third time. So we haven't been rejected. The other times we were rejected. Here, instead of being rejected, it's more of just a pullback but staying above the moving averages. That's bullish behavior. That's the market's way of telling us it's building energy for another push higher. What takes that off the table below the moving averages on a weekly close? Until and unless that happens, this is what's going on. Playing the umpire, calling balls and strikes. Anything to discuss in the NASDAQ market across the queues or anything like that? Absolutely not. The band plays on, the melt-up continues, no different in the queues, move it along.
How about the XLF? What's going on in the financials? How come they didn't make new highs today? How come they came down yesterday and were stuck in the mud today? Because they're at a very, very critical area that becomes more critical at the end of December. $30.98 is your bogey. Closing above that number at the end of December will be bullish for the financials. What we're seeing right now is a run up to that number, and it really is showtime whether or not we see the financials or the XLF in this case bust through that number and close positive or above that number, $30.98 for the month of December or to close out the year. That's certainly possible, but what we're seeing right now is essentially just a stall out at that number. No rejection yet. If we do get rejected or the XLF gets rejected at that number, it's one thing. But if we just get somewhat of a light touch, pull back, go sideways for a while, what's that telling us? That's telling us if that were to happen, that's telling us that the XLF is winding up to go higher. Even though we talked about the fact it could be quiet leading into the actual month of January, it also doesn't have to be that way. Stuff could happen. We have to have an awareness on both sides. We always want to respect both sides of the tape. Anything doing in the SMH good old smash mouth today? Absolutely not. Same routine. They're just grinding higher along with everything else. Whether one market is up more or less than another on any particular day doesn't really matter unless there's a real divergence with one of my favorite two leading indicators, the IWM and or the transports. We certainly consider good old Smash Mouth in there, but it comes in in third place. I like to go with my first two horses. Right now, the horses really aren't telling us anything different than we're seeing in the market that makes it a duck market. With that, that's a pretty good place to pull the ripcord. Before I do, thank you. I appreciate you very much. Each and every one of you very much. Without you, these videos are not possible. So for that, I am thankful. I am David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.